Hi, welcome to my first video. Um, as mentioned in the title, I would like to talk about the Masters of the Universe Origins Eternia playset. By the time I record this, um, this project by Mattel Creations is not fully backed. They're currently at 75%. I think another 1200 to 1300 backers are still missing. Um, if it's successful, I won't complain. Congratulations on all of those who um, purchased it, but uh, I will not support this project. And I would like to give my opinion on why I do not support it. Um, first, I would like to go back to the year 1987. That's when it appeared in my local store. I know it was already introduced in 1986, but took a while to show up in Germany. Also, there was no Toys R Us. Um, I think the first Toys R Us opened that year in Koblenz in 1987. So, and yeah, that was, Koblenz was like 60, 70 miles or 110 kilometers away from where I lived. So mm -mm, I would have never made that uh, there. And there were only two toy stores in my vicinity which actually had an Eternia playset in stock. One, just one. And those were priced at 400 Deutsche Marks. Um, at that time, the currency exchange, that would compare to um, 220 US dollars. About 220. Um, at 1987, the US dollar was at a decline was sitting at between, I think the highest was two Deutschmarks and lowest was 1.6 Deutschmarks. So 1.8 would be the median. So I, yeah, 220, Deutsch, uh, 220 US dollars for an Eternia playset. Um, when I saw the, uh, some people um, posted pictures of old catalogs from Toys R Us back in the eighties, showing the Eternia playset advertised at $90. That would, that would have been like 160, 170 Deutsche Marks back in the day. Well, that would have been tempting, but 400 Deutsche Marks, um, for an average income family in Germany, for a kid actually living in such a family and not having many, uh, brothers and sisters, you know, being maybe an only child, this would compare to maybe four, four Christmas or birthday presents rolled into one. So you, as you can see, um, nah, I, most, most, um, parents would have hesitated in buying their kids one of those since for that, for that money, you would get a nice bicycle probably, or, uh, would pay a good part of a home computer, which were quite popular in the eighties, in the mid eighties, like Commodore or Atari. Um, but not, not a toy, not, not for that price. And at that time, Germany had been the strongest or at least one of the strongest economies in Europe at that time. Uh, just for comparisons, uh, Spain, um, their, uh, per capita income, gross per capita income would have been like 50, maybe 60% of what it had been in Germany. And the toys weren't uh, any cheaper there. So f just to give you an impression, in 1986, I bought a battle armor skeleton in Spain on a holiday. Uh, the reason why is uh, the battle armor skeleton hadn't been released in Germany, never, uh, never showed up. Mattel skipped on a few, um, on a few uh, action figures in Germany, like from the Punch Heman as well. We didn't have Faker, didn't have Clamp Champ, so. Uh, I had the opportunity to buy a battle armor skeleton in Spain, and the price was almost 30 Deutsche Marks. Um, th at that time, the, the dollar was a bit higher, but it would have been like 12 US dollars easily for one figure, 12 US dollars. And even uh, if you compare the prices um, uh, in Germany, uh, a action figure would have been in comparison to the dollar like seven or eight dollars easily uh except for when uh the u s dollar was at uh its 
height in the 80s and the top was like almost three Deutsche marks in 1984 or something but then it rapidly declined in, in value compared to Deutsche mark still so um yeah just to give you an impression i think that's why the attorney has sold even worse in europe in comparison maybe some um maybe some shops put those on sale eventually but i never saw any of those on sale not at my stores in germany and i also thought of what would make this place at work being worth 400 Deutschmarks or whatever. So, uh, well, the, the most significant play feature about this is uh, undeniably the monorail, you know, but what comes afterwards? So you have three towers, the, the center tower, which is, yeah, which has some play features and maybe some accessories, but it's, I, I don't, I didn't find it very appealing since it was unaligned and I, well, that, that lion head with those arms and, I think even the Castle Grace color, the, the original, it's it's um, uh, drawbridge was uh, a better play feature, a better uh, uh, more atmospheric play feature than this, and uh, it gets even worse if you compare the two side towers, the Grace Carl Tower and the Snake Tower or Snake Mountain Tower. So one had just a, a portcullis, but was hollow with nothing in it yeah one even was just hollow without anything else so and comparing it like when cast grace car in the united states cost 20 dollars and you have that for 90 dollars or some people even said would have been 140 dollars but i only saw catalogs pricing it at 90 that's four times the price but do you get four times the play set or four times the accessories um not really. I'm, I mean, uh, even at that time, uh, I don't, I do not see how, uh, the pr that price was justified. And, um, so I, I think that a better idea would have been maybe if Mattel at that time would have, um, realized that this is just megalomania and, as, um, as a result would have, um, redesigned the whole play set into three separate play sets, meaning each tower would come out as a play set of its own, featuring an equal amount of size, play features, accessories. For example, the in the mini comics, the snake tower was used as a hideout by the snake man, so they could have just widened it. Um, insert like a, a or implement a throne room or something or or a snake pit and put in some snakes and stuff for the for the grace car uh, tower they could have also increased the size maybe include a vehicle which can be uh, e ejected or something or somehow released through a ramp or so you get the point so make three separate play sets maybe worth 15 dollars at best and then as a coronation, they should have released the monorail as a fourth playset to connect all three towers or maybe even only two towers with each other. That have, would have been an idea. So separating the playset and making it modular would have made it more affordable for families and kids. And also the logistics would have been easy to handle like the shipping or the storage at the uh, the toy stores. It would have had an easier time. And in my opinion, it might have attracted more customers. Uh, yeah. Someone mentioned, I think on Facebook, that the original place it was only sold like 4,000 times. Um, now, what I've heard as an argument by some people who backed the project is, well, the vintage play set is so much more expensive. So that's the, the easier deal now. That's now I have a chance to, to actually get it. But is that argument really good enough? I mean, should a vintage or should any, uh, vintage item be the benchmark for the price of a new item? Uh, shouldn't it be, shouldn't it be actually the other way around? I, I mean, I know times where there were releases or re-releases of uh, items in order so that 
the prices for old collector's items would drop. And I think that's, that's the better alternative that um, of, um, availability uh, decreases the prices as a whole instead of um, further inflating prices. And we already have the problems with scalpers increasing the prices of new items due to shortages by sellout, artificial shortages. So, and another thing that I see as a problem is with the shipping. If Mattel sold the Eternia playset at retail, they could have used their branches overseas in order to import the items, which would have been a lot cheaper than regular customers having to import the item. So these are my two cents regarding the Eternia playset. You're welcome to leave a comment, but please keep it civil, you know, agree to disagree. Hope you liked the video. If yes, then please click the like button, possibly even subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. And I see you soon. Bye.